Welcome to the CEC Report. It's the 30th of November. I'm Robert Barwick, and I'm joined today by a special guest, Denise Braley of the Banking and Finance Consumer Support Association. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, Robbie. Or welcome back, I should say, Denise. Mm -hmm. In this week's CEC Report, it, it, we're, it, this will be an interview with Denise, which I'm calling Predatory Banks Are the Threat to the Economy, Not the Royal Commission. Um, before we get started, though, Denise, just to remind the viewers, look, there's the, the, there's two issues that the CEC are pushing hard at the moment in terms of specific policy changes that we need to force on the government. One is the bank separation bill in Parliament. Keep, keep talking to your Member of Parliament about that. The other one is pushing the government to amend the APRA bail-in law that was rammed through Parliament last February with only seven senators in the room, right? We need to get an amendment up that that states explicitly what the government claims, that it doesn't apply to deposits. Well, prove it, put it in the law. And you need to call or email your Member of Parliament about this constantly. The details are on our website. Let's make this happen. It's worth pointing out that the government is in disarray. They're on the run. They've cancelled all their sitting days um, next year, right? They do not want that kind of parliamentary heat. They cannot handle it. So when you see a government like that, you pour it on. Don't back off, pour it on. This is where there's, uh, there's vulnerabilities in the political system, you're forced through changes, right? And so I just wanna make that point, get the material off our website and don't just um, absorb this information that you get from our show passively, get involved. This is where our strength comes from as a political movement. So with that said, let me welcome you back again, as I said, Denise. Um, Denise, you last appeared on this show at, at the, uh, the last day of the first round of hearings of the Royal Commission. And today, the 30th of November, is the last day of the last round of hearings That's of correct. the Royal Commission, right? So we've seen it all. Um, what is your assessment, now that we've seen what's happened, what's your assessment of how, what the Royal Commission has achieved, both positive and negative? Well, the Royal Commission is run exceptionally well by Commissioner Hayne. Uh, he's a man of high standing, high integrity, uh, and uh, certainly on top of his game there. Yep. But he is restricted by the uh, terms of reference. Yep. I mean, when I first looked at those terms of reference and saw below community expectations, yep. which uh, QC Rowena Orr has had to mention so many times, yep. so is Mr. Hayne, and that is just despicable that the terms of reference were weak to that degree, yeah, yeah. you know, that you cannot have that. And so the biggest problem that doesn't service consumer protection very well at all is that we're not getting to the nitty gritty of what should be examined on that witness stand in the Royal Commission. It is only scratching the surface and that's why we need a Mark II. A, 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 a larger expanded Royal Commission that can yes. put all the, get all, you know, like not all of them maybe, but as many victims as possible so that, because their cases have to be heard to, so people can actually see just what the banks get up to. Yes, that's right. Right? If you, you, how can you stop the behaviour unless you see this is what the banks can do in this case, in this case, in yes. this case. The other thing I'll point out that I noticed straight away in the beginning is that 27 cases were heard. Mm. Only a handful of cases were heard regarding mortgages, and that's yes. the big elephant yep. in the room. Yep. So the problem there is that we don't have enough information about what was really going in on the mortgage side of things. We heard bits of all the other yep. um, scandals, which really highlights there were scandals within scandals, sure, sure. which I'll be talking about tomorrow. But the main problem here is we've got a royal commission that is only scratching the surface and we're not getting across the message and also only 27 of those uh, people that appeared, they were all settled cases. I don't think the public realised that at the moment. Those files came from the banks. They didn't come uh. from ASIC. ASIC did their cases. They don't do investigations. They write to the consumers and say, we don't do investigations. So the banks put up the cases, they, they were happy to be examined. Absolutely. And they were all very happy people because their case had been settled. Well, let's talk about that because this is why I, I, I've titled the show the way I have. Predatory banks are the threat to the economy. 
So you, from your personal experience, you have advocated on behalf of thousands of cases. Mm. And tomorrow, like you said, you're going to give a, a presentation at our seminar, mm. you know, um, Australian Mortgage Fraud Mark II. Just yeah. give people a sense of, of this, what you, in your view is the scale of, this, of the mortgage fraud, the consequences, what you see happening in the economy, um, because you know the banks are now being, the, the Royal Commission is being blamed for undermining lending in Australia, which is going to crash the economy apparently, mm. even, even just touching the surface as you said, right? But you know this was a much bigger problem already existing, so just give people a bit of a sense of that. Well, the biggest problem that I saw was that I spoke to brokers, I spoke to bank managers, I spoke to insiders, and it was obvious to me that 60 to 80% of loans that were being sold as I.O. loans, which people didn't know they were I.O. loans. They were sold as Lodox, a name, just as yeah. a mortgage. So they. So you, 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 when you say people didn't know they were interest-only loans, you've had people that you've spoken to, they thought they were paying off a loan, principal and interest, but they've only been paying interest. People I've spoken to, about 3,000 people, 70% did not know it was an I.O. Wow. And that is why then comes the question, what percentage were the brokers on their quotas being pushed yeah. to sell? And the big push to sell as many of these loans to only people who owned a house. They had an asset. Uh. They're usually 50, uh, aged 50 and above. And those people were the target market identified back in 99, 2000. Mm. So we know this has been going a long, long time. So April was forced to say what it believed the statistics were in terms of the percentage of these loans, and they came up with 40%. Now, the American banks at the height of the GFC only admitted 25%. That's right. But we're admitting 40% because we were doing it a bit yeah. uh, on a bad side. But however, I'm saying they're 80% because that's yeah. what the brokers are telling me. Denise, we don't do this. And yeah. I can verify from people like, um, one of the points that Dr. Wilson saw, who appeared on the show a little while ago, mm -hmm. who worked at APRA NASIC, he keeps emphasizing, look, this is all, this is a system really of self-regulation. The banks self-report. And that's why there can be a discrepancy between what APRA claims or ASIC claims and what yes. you see on the ground. Yes. Because the banks aren't telling the truth is the yeah. bottom line. Yeah. It's just, all lies and the biggest lie to parliament consistently for the last 18 years has been there's no systemic issue now they're having to agree there's a large systemic issue so if there is a large systemic issue do we throw it under the carpet or do we come out and start um, having a conversation about that yeah because and, and you said in um, when you presented made a presentation to our last seminar in perth you said you, people have warned you off by saying you're going to crash the economy. And yes. isn't that the problem? If, that's, if, if telling the truth is going to crash the economy, don't we have a problem? We have a bigger problem because they're still selling the product. Yep. If it was a car manufacturer and they were selling dud cars and people were dying or, or suffering extreme loss through that, uh, that uh, manufacturing of a product, uh, then you can't have banks manufacturing a faulty product without any consumer protection at all because the regulators have been silenced. Yep. All right, let's take a break and we'll continue this afterwards. Welcome back to the CEC Report where I'm talking with Denise Braley of the Banking and Finance Consumers Support Association about what's happened at the Royal Commission so far and the ongoing problem in the banking system Predi which we're calling predatory banks are the threat to the economy, not the Royal Commission. So, Denise, back to the Royal Commission. This last round, I've found, frankly, the most shocking because um, it's at the end, but we've had the Chief Executives, Chairman and ASIC and APRA on the stand this last round. Yeah. Denise, do you think from what you've seen of the CEOs and Chairman and ASIC and APRA on the stand, their attitude they've exhibited, do you think they can be trusted to take the lessons of the Royal Commission and fix the problem themselves as they'd like us to believe. So it's like, oh yeah, we've heard it. Now, thanks for pointing this out, we can fix it. Do you think they can be trusted to do that or do we need serious government intervention? I think what the Australian public have been watching in the Royal Commission to, in terms of the 
these captains of industry, these masters of the universe is yes. my name for yes. them. They cannot be trusted because they've been running these scams the whole time. And I do call them a scam. A scam is where a fraud is necessary, a deception is necessary in order for them to get what they want. And now they're admitting, of course, these banks, that this was um, something which benefited the bank. Yes. Every step of the way, nothing benefited the consumer. And, and, and the, chief, the commissioner has quite often intervened to say, and who's profited from that? He, he's on the same wavelength as you on that, for he sure. He is. He knows there's a black box there. Yep. Every flight has got a black box yep. recorder. Yep. <laughs> I have been following this recorder for the last 18 years. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly what the tools are and the mechanics, which I'll be talking about tomorrow. But the main thing is that they cannot be trusted on the stand. So Mr. Uh, Commissioner Hain was left with very little to work on, very weak terms of reference, frustrated at times, particularly with Ken Henry. I mean, I think yeah. we all sat there and watched, shook our heads and thought, this is disgraceful. And what's your, I was going to ask you about so what's your view of Ken Henry, having seen his performance, but what you know about him? I think he should have a meeting with me and have a good telling <laughs> off. That's what I truly believe, Mr. Henry. You want to improve your image, you've got to talk to the people on the, uh, at the grassroots level. Yeah. Um, he, he was just one of the, the, the chairman or chief of executives that, that Rowena Orr especially kept pointing out that um, they knew all these problems, yet they still signed off on full bonuses. 100% and, and over 100% bonuses. Yes. That, that alone, that's, that's probably the, 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 the one area that Royal Commission was able to look at in any, in any depth. That alone shows you they're not serious. No. And the other thing I found out recently within the industry, <clears throat> the banks have not lowered their quotas. So if they say they're trying to do better, lower your quotas. And you're talking about quotas for um, selling. mortgage selling. Yeah, yeah mortgage, mortgage selling. selling. And mortgage any is product it, oh, selling, any sure. like insurance, super, you know, yeah. lower your quotas. And of course, that means less profit for them. So this is all about profit. And then they say, we're looking after the shareholders. Well, I got news for the shareholders that you wouldn't be running Ponzi financing in mortgage fraud if you cared about your shareholders. The shareholders have got to start right. getting to the AGMs, asking more questions yep. and start understanding what a bank fraud really is on a global yeah. Uh, basis, yeah. Because it can look good for it can look good for decades, yes, and then blow up on them. Yes, so isn't that the lesson of two thousand and eight? Absolutely, it is. Um, so Ken Henry came out with this probably one of his more shocking statements: is it'll take ten years to fix NAB's culture. What do you? What's your impression of that statement? He's really suggesting, in my view, that. He'd like to take 10 years to try and think <laughs> what he's going to do next. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going down. Yeah. Because if you look at it analytically, it, like the car I was talking about, if you've got a product that has got flaws in it, in, in a polite sense, mm. then what else are you going to sell to keep those profit levels up? Yeah. And if you are ordered by the government in a properly regulated arena, to stop selling um, uh, flawed products to the consumers, vulnerable consumers, uh, and using a non-consumer protective regime in the regulatory bodies, then uh, you've got to find something else to sell. Yep. And isn't it as simple as, uh, this, is, this was my reaction, that he talked about the culture question, he talked about, he then, he then went on a thing about um, you know, the issue, the, one of the problems here is capitalism itself. And I understand, you know, not to, I understand why he was saying that, but at a certain point, isn't this problem much simpler than that? Aren't we talking about just following the law and not ripping people off? Isn't it yes. pretty basic? Why are banks, why is this seen in banks to be a cultural pro issue when for anybody else it's just follow the law and don't rip people off? And the, you've hit the nail on the head, Robbie. The, the main problem is that 95% of the public and the consumers themselves that are caught 
yeah. expect that that was happening. Yeah. They didn't know the regulators were turning their heads in the opposite yeah. direction. Yeah. They didn't know that any of these things were not being addressed. They didn't know that the banks were allowed willy-nilly yeah. to sell um, a, a, a fraudulent product. It's not just a matter of a flawed product. Mm. It is uh, fraud. And, and there's criminal activity within a cartel. And Commissioner Hayne picked that up extremely well. He asked one of these bankers, are you acting as one? Yes, that's right. And I think we all sat back when the answer on the yeah. third attempt of waffling was, well, no one wants to be first had a course right. out of the box. What sort of answer is that? Yeah. And this is what we're dealing with at the moment, that the banks are having an education that really the consumers are in charge of this country. No matter what else happens, the consumers are in charge. They need to be given the weapons to fight this terrible disease within yeah. the banking frame. Well, um, uh, in response to Ken Henry's statement, a, a uh, pretty highly experienced banker called me and said, you'll never have a better argument to break up the banks because if it's, if it's supposedly going to take 10 years to fix this culture, obviously the current management is not up to the job, plus the job is too big. Break them up, simplify them, and of course if you break them up, one of the things that, if you have what, what we call Glass-Steagall, um, Glass-Steagall forbids banks from, our Glass-Steagall bill that we've got in Parliament will forbid banks from securitising, mm -hmm. and if banks can't securitise, they don't get to profit from bad loans. Because at the moment, securitising and derivatives allow them to make bad loans and profit from those. That's right. If they're normal banks, they, they, if they make a bad loan, it costs them. Yes. Right? Don't profit. If, but, but when you've got this distorted system, we're always going to have this problem. Yeah. Um, let's take a break. And when we come back, I want to talk more about your organisation. Welcome back to the CEC Report, where I'm talking to Denise Braley of the Banking and Finance Consumer Support Association on how predatory banks are the threat to the economy, not the Royal Commission. Um, and Denise, I was struck this week, actually, I saw that everyone's been impressed with Rowena or her style. Yes. And I, what, what impresses me is, you know, she is thoroughly prepared, right? Mm -hmm. It's not histrionics, it's just thorough preparation and not taking a backward step with the question. Turns out she has a high degree in criminology. Um, as do as does Denise Braley is, is a trained criminologist, and this is very important if you're going to take on banks. It's good to it's good to have an, an understanding of the criminal mind. So, Denise, you've been at this for quite a long time. How, how long is it? 18, eighteen years? years. Eighteen years. And what's your after eighteen years of doing this, and with your walking stick beside you there, uh, you know what, what we know what happens with time. We all, it takes a toll on all, the, all of us. What's your message to ASIC? Um, in terms of the fact you've been doing their job for them? Well, I've had over 30 meetings over the years with ASIC commissioners and deputy chair and whatever. And the one thing I kept saying to them all the way through, this is not my job. It's yours. This is your job. You're getting paid a little bit more than I am. <laughs> Just a tad. You can imagine. And probably bonuses. <laughs> but I remember saying to them one time, my budget to run this little support group is around $10,000 a year. That just covers the outs. David, meet Goliath, or Goliath, meet David. That's right. I said to one of them, if I had your budget, yeah. he cut in immediately and said, Denise, if you had our budget, you'd be positively dangerous. <laughs> so a year later, I applied for a job there. Did you know that? As no. a top investigator. Really? On the executive team. And they knocked me back. <laughs> and I remember one of the Australian put out a story on that one. That, you really? know, uh, yeah, Thanks. saying that she probably is the one person ASIC should have in there. And I do get that quite a lot. Denise, you should be running ASIC. And uh, I'm not applying for the job, by the way. <laughs> and you being knocked back for a job at ASIC should have been a question at the Royal Commission. Yeah. So you've run this Banking and Finance Consumer Support Association, which you started, yes, right? I so did. just um, how, how did that come about and how does it work and how can people get involved? 
Well, it started because the media needed someone. Um, it was an advocate to try and help a few people that came to them. And I oh, okay. agreed. I usually say yes because I'm just that way inclined. Little softy. And then regret it later. But um, <laughs> 18 years later, they're still coming uh, to need help because there is no one else out there, frustratingly mm. for me, that is actually doing what I do. There are other groups out there where these people are paid by government. You talk about the Financial Ombudsman Service now. That's what I wasn't going to name anybody, <laughs> but we'll put that top of the list. Yeah. Because I wrote a 14-page report why FOSH should be demolished. Yeah. Now we've got AFCA, and that I've already seen three determinations. And they're arguing that the, agent is, the, uh, the uh, broker is the agent of the borrower, and that is false. The courts have already ruled on that. Hay know that, uh, Rowena Orr knows that, and yet they're still doing that. And well, it's, it's not frustrates the, It's me. not the borrower who pays the, the brokers the trailing commission, no. is it? No. And they were defending, even this week, they were defending those trailing commissions, yeah. some of these bankers in the Royal Commission. So tomorrow I'm getting stuck into that. I'm, I'm actually sounding like I'm on the side of the brokers. But the brokers didn't know what the fraud was either. And I yep. get frustrated every time ASIC used the brokers as a whipping stick because 45% of the loans were written by brokers, but 55% were run were written by the industry. Ah. And they're exactly the same fraud. Now, yep. how could that yep. happen? The brokers yep. and bankers don't know each other. Yep. They can't collude. The 16 people, men, at the top of the cartel they collude all the time. Now you've tried to get this out in the media, but most of the time you, you get frustrated because you'll get an interview and then just a few seconds shows up. Yes. Has this, has, has this story about the brokers, your, your perspective of it, really been reported in Australia? No. Yeah, and that's why we do shows like this. Yes. So with the, just, just for the viewer's benefit, because we do get um, bank victims watch this show, what's, what, how do you get involved and what can they expect if they get involved with the BFCSA? Well, at least I can send them out uh, instructions of how to go about looking first for the fraud in their own file and how to get their You document. provide a self, you, you, you help them do self-help. Yes, self-help. Yeah. yeah. And for a, for a small fee, $60 an individual and $100 a couple. Per person, yeah. yeah. And $100 a couple per year. It's a dollar a week. Which that's a, where your $10,000 budget comes from. Yeah. You, you do need that. Yeah. Right? But, yeah. you, but you've had huge experience here. So when, with thousands and thousands of cases, that's, where, that's why you can provide this kind yes. of template for them to help. And I understand globally from others, certainly uh, internationally, telling me I'm the only weirdo that started to do this in, really? in, in globally. Yeah. Nobody else actually had, one, the education to be able to dig deeper yeah. and gave up their, not just free time, but years of their life uh, looking at the files to help the consumers themselves. Because the, the closest equivalent is these um, class action law firms, but they have a financial motive. No, they usually ring you, me first. They ring you first. <laughs> All right, Denise, thanks very much. Denise, Denise is in Melbourne to um, address our seminar tomorrow on Australian mortgage fraud Mark II, which the first one, the first uh, version she did went viral on YouTube. So for, for viewers, this will be that Denise's presentation tomorrow will be put on our YouTube channel sometime in the next uh, week. Yes. So tune in to watch that as well. But Denise, thanks for coming to the CEC report. Very welcome. And yes. thanks to the viewers for tuning in. Tune in next week for more of the CEC report.